In this presentation, we're going to record a transaction where we have one deposit that's related to two invoices with the use of the bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see the deposit that will come through from the bank feeds. We need, we need to apply them out to an invoice. However, there's two invoices that add up to that one deposit, which we will have to match out. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to go down to the reports down below, opening up our financial statements, that being, of course, the balance sheet and income statement. We're going to be starting off with the old balance sheet. Here we have it, selecting that one. Then we're going to duplicate the tab, mousing over to the tab up top, right-clicking on it, duplicating it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to be going down to the reports once again on the bottom left. We're going to be doing the same kind of process to the income statement, opening up that income statement mousing over the tab up top right clicking on it to duplicate it changing the dates now going over to the first tab where our balance sheet is and adjusting the date to 2019 that's the year we're working on updating that report it is 2020 right now but we're just working in 2019 because we had all right anyway we're going to go back up top there it is and i showed the detail down here that's what i was doing down there and then we're going to go back to the second tab same process, bringing this on back to 2019, updating that report, scrolling down to the bottom, showing the details so we can see all the stuff that's going on. Then we're going to go back to the first tab. We're going to go down to the accounting. We're going to be opening up the transactions so that we can work with our bank feeds. And then I'm going to filter this because we're practicing filtering now. At least I am. I think it's a good practice to take on. Getting better at it. I'm going to uncategorize. Those are the ones we want. I'm going to apply that. There's our uncategorized items. Now we're going to have we're going to be dealing with this deposit. Now we're going to say now that we have once again an invoice that we need to match out. So I'm going to our flow chart. This is in QuickBooks Desktop. We're just looking at the flow chart in QuickBooks Desktop. That they have a nice flow chart. So we have our in we're going to say that we're not doing a cash basis. We're doing the the kind of accrual thing. So we have invoices that are happening and we're going to match them out to the deposit. But this time we have invoices happening and then we're collecting on them multiple invoices that we're then going to have to uh, match together because we deposited them together and therefore they're, they're going to be seen on the bank feeds as one deposit even though there's multiple invoices. Now, I, word of caution here, if there's only a couple invoices you have to match together, this isn't too bad. But if you, get, if you start getting to the point where it's like three or more invoices, even just three or more, it starts to get kind of messy. So what I would recommend doing if that were the case is taking your, your uh, invoice, depositing them into a clearing account first, such as you know just a checking account that you set up that's a clearing account, putting them into there, or possibly the cash on hand account that they give you, uh, the other cash account. And then when you go to the bank, group them together and then go to the bank and just transfer them out of that clearing account to the uh to the checking account so that it'll show up in in your system in the same in the same format that you will see on um uh, on the bank statements so we'll see a process that also is the case when you have the create the sales receipt so like if you're working in a store where you make a lot of sales of small things possibly and you have a lot of turn a lot of transactions then again you might have cash that you're going to be putting together and so every time you record the transaction, then you might be wanting to put them into basically a clearing account and then transfer them to the clearing account to the checking account as the as the bank feeds happen. So we'll take a look at that next time. Uh, this time we're going to be grouping together those two invoices. All right. So here's the process. We're gonna, And we're going to go back in time again. So we're going to imagine that we're going back before the bank feeds happened and we're entering the invoice as if we entered the invoice, increase in accounts receivable, increasing sales. We're gonna enter two of them this time. And then the bank feeds happen later. We see them clear the bank through the bank feeds and we're gonna match those two invoices out to the one amount that's in the bank feed. All right, let's do it. We're gonna go back over here. I'm gonna right click on this tab again, duplicate this tab so we can make our invoices. I'm gonna go back up top to the dashboard to do so. I'm going to go to this fairly large blue button up in the upper right hand side and we're going to go and create an invoice. We're going to create an invoice with it. I'm going to add a new customer. So I'm going to call this customer two, customer two. So it's our second customer. And then the date, I'm going to bring this on back to April because that's like when we're working. So we're going to bring this back to April and I'll say second this time. And the due date, I'll just keep the same uh, for it. And then I'm going to go down to the items. So there's no item. I'm going to 
add an item down here. So the item, notice it's kind of saving the items. If you want standardized items, then you'd want to basically create, you know, your standardized list of items. I'm just going to create another item, which is sales two. And I'm going to say, okay, no items found. I'm going to create that item then. And then I'm just going to call this uh, sales two. And I'm going to say this was for uh, quantity one. I'm just, you know, putting in a, a number here, obviously 10,000 to match the deposit. So this doesn't match the deposit yet. The deposit was 17,000 that we're trying to match up to. This is one of two invoices that we'll, we're going to say came through to do that. So what's this going to do? Increase the accounts receivable and increase the sales. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to save and send save and record a payment so i'm going to go ahead and save and send and it says i don't have the customer for some reason i thought i added the customer customer two that's the one we want and i'm going to create it i didn't say create down here and then i'm going to create the customer and then i'm going to go down here and say save and send so we'll get that one out now, obviously, we can't send it by the by email because you know I didn't put an email account on it. I'm just going to say save and send so that I can see it populate over here into our uh, balance sheet. Then I'm going to update the balance sheet and see if it see if it processed through. There's our receivable, so it looks like it all happened the way it's supposed to. I'm just want to check out the receivable because I'm concerned about the bank feeds more than uh, the invoicing process right now. So then I'm going to go back over. And I'm going to make another invoice. So let's say we want to create another invoice up top. And let's do this whole thing again. I'm going to make another customer. This time, customer three. Customer three. And then I'm going to add it. That's what I missed last time. There it is. So I'm going to say save. And then I'm going to add an item down here. I'm just going to say sales three. And I'm going to add it which I missed like there we go and then just sales three and this is going to be for the price of seven thousand so seven thousand that should add up to my 17 that I'm looking for right there okay there's the seven thousand then I'm going to go ahead and save and send that one so we're going to save and send it just to record it so I think that'll do it and then I'm going to go back to my uh, balance sheet. We're going to update the balance sheet. We have those two invoices now that have been created. That's going to create the receivable. Now I'm going to go back over. It didn't send it. So I'm going to go back over. It says send. I'm going to say mark as sent just for our practice problem. Mark it as sent. So it's out. And that means I'm going to go back over and see if it then updates my AR, which it should. So I'm going to update the accounts receivable and I still have a problem and I think that's going to be a date issue. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to edit my invoice and say, did I mess the date up? I'm pretty sure I did. So I'm going to update and then I'm going to make it go back to, to uh, the past 2019. Let's bring this on back to April. Let's make it the third this time. And, and then let's save and continue again. And then go back on over to the balance sheet and we're going to update this again and see if our AR pops up. There it is. There it is at the 17,000. That's what I was hoping to see. So we've increased the accounts receivable by the 17,000. The other side is going to the sales. So now we're going to match these two invoices out to that one bank feed that we have. If I go into the detail here, then you see these are the two invoices that we have just created. So I'm going to close that back out. So now let's go back over to the feeds. I'm going to go back over to the bank feeds and I have the 17,000. So now it's, it's forward in time and, and they've paid us. These two people have paid us, but they paid us in two separate transactions. And we took those, we took those amounts and we deposited it to the bank in one lump sum. It cleared the bank as 17,000. So then we'd have to match this out. And so I'm going to click on this item and we'd have to match that out to the invoices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I need to split this uh, deposit. I'm going to split the deposit so we have two categories. And then I'm going to choose the first category. We're going to say it's going to be a payment receipt for an invoice. I'm going to pick up the 10,000. So here's one invoice we're going to apply it out to. The second one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say it's a payment receipt for an invoice. And we're going to choose the second invoice. So there we have then uh, the, the total amount of the 17,000. And then I got to change the amount here. This should be 10,000 here and then 7,000 here. 
So that should apply it out. So on this first one, then we had obviously 10,000 outstanding, 10,000 are being applied to it. On the second one, we had 7,000 outstanding, as we can see here, and we're applying the 7,000 to it. So that should apply it out to those two invoices. Then I'm going to say save and see if that applies out. And then I'm going to say, okay, that check that off. And then I'll go back to our balance sheet and say, what's going to happen when I refresh the balance sheet, the accounts receivable, you would think would go back down to zero. Now that we have, we have checked it off, nothing's going to happen to cash. It's already included. Where's the other side on the income statement? It's recorded on the income statement as uncategorized income. It's now going to be applied to the 17,000. So let's update this and see what happens. So we scroll on down. And so this is gone. That's what we expect. Then on the income statement side of things, uh, it, uh, and if I update the income statement, uh, we have the uncategorized items is going down, right? So now we're left with only that one item remaining as the uncategorized income. And that's what we'll be uh, working with next time. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.